Hello, Sammy. I'm Ogre 6, and you don't know me. I saw your video asking what evidence atheists would accept of the existence of the gods. With the understanding that I speak only for myself, I thought I'd try to answer you. The easiest answer, of course, is one you've already heard. An omniscient god would know what evidence I require. An omnipotent god would be able to provide it, and an omnibenevolent god would want to. Hmm, that's okay as far as it goes, but it's a bit glib and unsatisfying, isn't it? Also, I'm not sure it's sound. Are these three qualities essential for a being to reasonably call itself a god? Surely they could be quite astonishingly powerful without being all-powerful. If nothing else, you'd expect each to represent a check on the power of the others. Similarly, they could know quite an impressive bit without knowing absolutely everything. And omnibenevolence, well, it takes only a quick look round to see that if there are any truly all-loving beings, their power, knowledge, or both are somewhat less than godlike. I've heard many answers to your question, Sammy. Usually the responses involve massive world-changing events. I think it was Matt Dillahunty who suggested that the gods could speak to the whole world at the same time, each of us hearing their voices inside our head, speaking our own language, but each receiving the same message. I admit that would be pretty impressive, but I'm a simple man, and my standards are a bit lower. Say a being in vaguely human form showed up at my apartment. If the stories are true, gods love doing that sort of thing. Hey, I'm Ogre, I'd say. Yes, I know, he'd answer. I'm a god. Folks call me Frank. What would Frank have to do to convince me? Well, first, he might perform a casual miracle or two. I recommend the water to wine thing. The way to my heart is through my liver. Also, I could use a new pair of knees if healing's on the table. My knees seem to be aging less gracefully than the rest of me. And while we're handing out miracles, could we maybe throw some love to the Knicks? They need the help. Second, Frank might just sit and talk with me all night and share some of his superhuman knowledge and wisdom. I had a dream once years ago in which I was walking across campus and found Hegel sitting in the shade of the trees. I sat next to him on the grass and said, Mr. Hegel, I have enjoyed your work very much, but I am not sure that I have understood it. He spent hours explaining not only his own work, but the universe. Philosophy, politics, science, math, art, and it all made perfect sense. I awoke the next morning with this feeling of understanding everything, of being able to see the patterns that connect all the pixels into one transcendent image. It was a very powerful feeling that unfortunately disappeared in the shower. If Frank could give me that feeling again, and if I could keep it, even after Frank was gone, that would be compelling. Finally, Frank might leave behind a memento of his visit that I could examine further the next day and show to other people. For example, I like flowers. Perhaps Frank would leave me a unique and apparently impossible flower, maybe even a talking flower. That'd be pretty neat. My friends would ask where I got it, and I'd say, Oh, this guy Frank gave it to me. He's, like, totally a god. So, I guess that's your answer. That would convince me, but Sammy, I have a question for you in return. My question is, so what? Seriously, so what? I still have to go to work in the morning. I mean, talking flowers and bottomless wine glasses are very nice, but is Frank going to house the homeless or depose the tyrants? It sure doesn't look like it. Oh, so you're a god, are you? Well, I played Charlie Brown in the school play in fifth grade. So what? My standards for evidence are lower than Dillahunty's because I don't care. I don't know why so many people, including many atheists, act like the existence of the gods is the most important question in the universe. It's hard to imagine anything that would matter less. I love life, Sammy, and to me the world is very beautiful. But that's because I am fortunate to live in a place where life can be good. That's not true for most folks. For the majority of humanity, the world is a sorrowful and ugly place. And here's the thing, the world is ugly even if the gods exist. Because of them or in spite of them, an awful lot has gone to shit, and the gods aren't going to fix it. Look around you, Sammy. The experience of your own life shows you that the gods don't matter. Regardless of whether the gods sent the flood, it was people who fished the victims out of the water. Regardless of whether the gods sent the earthquake, it was people who dug the survivors out of the rubble. Norman Borlaug didn't wait for the gods to feed the hungry. Jonas Salk didn't wait for the gods to eradicate polio. None of us can wait for the gods to save the world. We're gonna have to do that ourselves. If the gods exist, 
they'll just have to get out of the way. Their previous work demonstrates that they simply aren't up to the job.